Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on the old body style Chevrolet pickup that 1991 my son picked up. And today we're going to be changing the instrument cluster to a 1994 model instrument cluster because his uh, his gauges are these old uh, these old moon style gauges uh, that was they look modern when they came out, but now they look I don't know terrible. So we're going to put the needle style gauges in his dash, and we're going to have an uh, RPM gauge that is factory. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's get to it. So here is my harness plug for the old gauges. The new gauges uh, take a different plug and they take something called a DRAC module which is over here behind the glove box. This one does not have it. I have the module in the house. Uh, I'll bring it out when it comes time. I've got the wiring harness for the module right here and also the wiring harness for the new instrument cluster right here. You can see how these are uh, are different than the ones that are right here. These have got little pins inside holes and these contacts are on the outside. So what I've got to do is I've got to take this harness and put it on this connector, uh, getting rid of that connector plug. And in order to do that, I have instructions from the internet i will leave all these internet instructions uh down in the description below so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to install my drag plug i'm going to put my my box instead of it being behind the glove box i'm going to put it up in this hole i saw actually this guy right here i believe that's where he put his at uh, i'm going to put it up in here and run the wires out what you will notice on most of the people that do this they cut a big L shape out of the dash right here to get a lot of slack in these wires. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try not to do that. I will have to modify the shape of that hole slightly in order to make the new plug fit because the new plug is, is larger. And uh, I'm going to try to modify the new hole for the plug. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to start uh, snipping some wires and hooking up my my, my drag plug. Uh, they match the plugs. Up, the, the wires I'm going to be connecting match the wires and the color that's on this plug. So this is not terribly hard to do. Uh, there are some people that have issues with it. You have to program your drag box. That's what tells your speedometer where. To register when you're going down the road according to your the, the gears that's in your differential and according to your tire size and i will leave the link to that also in the description of this video so you can go uh, use a tire size calculator and find out how to set your drag and i have uh, put dip switches in my drag so i can I can easily adjust my tire size in case we decide to go with some lower profile tires, some bigger wheels. So I'm replacing uh, 88 to 91 moon style gauges with a 92 to 94 needle style gauges. And uh, if it works, this is how you do it. Okay, I've got my, my wires extended on my, my drag module and got them ran up behind and out this hole right here and now i've got to start connecting wires i'm gonna poke this up through here because that's where my mop my box is going to live from now on so like this red wire i'm just going to jerk on it and see which one moves over here just like that right there and I'm going to hook that red wire to the red wire on my old cluster 
connector and I'm going to go by this right here so this shows your drag box red wire red and white goes to red and white and I have found out also that this pin right here should be located in position two not position one alrighty I've got my wires for my drag all wired in shrink wrapped on and now I'm ready to start doing the uh, the main plug conversion. And that will be color for color. Uh, if this web page is telling me right, I know that um, this plug may have daylight, daytime running lights, and I know I don't. So if it does, that'll be a plug wire that's not connected. So, but most of these will be just one to one. I know there's there's two paint wires right here. And only one paint wire but you'll take these two and connect them to that one paint wire no there's three three paint wires to one two black wires to one and everything else should be one to one all right i'm getting down towards the end here i've still got a few wires left to do right here i want to kind of show you how i'm doing this so let's say that i want to do uh do this wire right here next that's blue I go over here to my graph and I look at there it is it's blue this is on the this is showing a 93 plug I believe mine's a 94 so I trace it around and it goes to blue and it's a8 so I just count down from a1 to a8 and make sure that it is the right plug so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the correct plug. So I'm safe to now cut this wire. And I will get my wire strippers. I'll strip it and I'll wire it to this one. I'll solder it and then I'll heat shrink it. So put my heat shrink on first. get it down out of the way and I'm going to strip these wires I'll solder it so here's my blue wire done uh, I don't really see any need to cut the dash the way some of these guys are doing it uh, maybe before I get done I will see that need but I've got plenty of room right here if you have your wires long enough now at the salvage yard I did cut the dash to get as much of the wiring harness as I could and I was hoping I could get this plug out. This plug and, and this one is not, you can't just take it out. You have to take a screwdriver and get in here and prise it out. And you can get it out. And that's what I did rather than cutting the dash out and sliding it down here and pulling it out. So anyway, I'm going to get the rest of these wires wrapped up and I'll come back. Okay, I've got all my wires connected. Uh, every color I had, I had in my original wiring harness including a white wire which is supposed to be your tack wire which was an unexpected surprise for me i'm hoping that's what it is uh i hooked it up anyway so now with this plug sitting right here i'm just going to uh, go get my gauge cluster plug it in and uh, crank the truck up and see if everything works okay i've got my gauge cluster plugged in i have not test fired it yet uh, so we'll try it out and see what what happens. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, I know what's going on. I hadn't got my drag box in. Let me get that. Okay, I got my box in. I really hope I didn't mess anything up. Something ain't right. All right, here we go. Well, okay. I had that plug in this part.
plugged in upside down. And I didn't know it would go in both ways because it's got locating pins on the plug itself. cut the camera off so the big problem I think I'm gonna have now is getting all the wires back in the dash when you cut the L shape like they do online uh, when they show you all these like this one right here like like that right there that gives you room to stuff the wires and I'm gonna to have to try to push mine back up in there and I think I can do it so let's get at it okay I don't know if y'all can see that but I wrapped all of my wires in electrical tape just bound them really really tight and that way I could shove them back up in the hole and the way this plug is made uh, on this dash I believe that this plug on the uh, the newer newer models that this is 91 model I believe the 94 model when I went to the junkyard to get it the plug was like raised out <clears throat> This dash where the plug goes is flush and it gives us it gives the plug enough room to just go Go in there where it goes. I can I, I've got my Bolts are, are just ready to go in right there. So I'm going to bolt this thing in and I'll come back when I get it all put back. Alrighty, I'm going to take this thing down the road and see if my speedometer is right. Alright, so my speedometer is showing about 33 and my GPS is showing about 28, 29. So, let me see if my cruise works. Guys, everything is working good. Uh, cruise control's working, signal works. I uh, haven't checked my headlights. I'll, I'll do that when I pull back in the garage. The only thing is the uh, speedometer is probably six miles an hour wrong. It's showing me going faster than I'm actually going. So I, I believe I need to put a shorter tire size in because I put my tire size that I have on here, these tires are worn out. So, and they're they're running low air pressure right now, so they're they're going to be shorter than they than actually what I put in. So, I'm going to go change my tire size. I got to get back on my calculator online and change my tire size and see what I can come up with. Okay, I'm going to show you the reason for using the dip switches because the way I programmed it wasn't exactly right so I want to flip all of these two off Well, I'm going to leave the first one on because I know the first one needs to be on according to what I just changed. So it's on, off. I need these middle two on. And the rest of them off. And that's how easy it is to change your wheel size uh, with when you got the dip switches plugged in. Alright guys, I'm out here on the road so I can get up to highway speeds. So I've got my speedometer set on 59 mile an hour by the cruise. And if you see that top line on my phone, it's showing 58, 59, so 60. See on my speedometer is showing showing 59 mile an hour. I'm trying to get it to work, maybe you can see. Going 59 mile an hour and 58, 59 mile an hour right here on my phone on my GPS. So that is absolutely what I wanted. Oh, I'm running out of road here. I got to slow down. 
So now, after I know my wheel calibration and gear ratio is set, all I've got to do is go home and put this dash back together. Okay, I got the dash back in. I don't have the climate controls in, and the reason I don't, they're in the floor. My son has taken those out. And he wants to put LED bulbs in those, and he wants to put LED bulbs in the gauge cluster. So I've just stuck all this back up in here to get it out of the way. And my job is done. I'll let him get to doing the LED bulbs. Okay, now I've got my dip switches installed onto my drack, and uh, I can flip any one of these on or off to get the programming right for my, my gears and my tire size. Alright, this is the back side of it. It's got the pins across the top here and across the bottom. It's not my best soldering job, but it will do. And now I'm going to go in here on the computer and find out which one of these switches needs to be tripped. Okay, I'll leave a link to this website in the description of this video. Uh, getting the uh, dip switch calculator going is real simple. You just input your tire size, minus 255. My aspect ratio is 70, and of course the wheel size is 15. That shows me having a 29-inch tire. My gear ratio is 3.08, and that leaves me with a .6684. And all you do is scroll down this list until you find .6684, or the closest thing to your number, as you can find sometimes you won't hit it exactly mine I got lucky and hit it exactly and it shows me that dip switch 1 and 2 needs to be on 3 and 4 needs to be off 5 needs to be on 6 and 7 needs to be off so the ones are on and the zeros are off now let's get back to the uh, drag module and we'll flip my dip switches okay so I need to flip 1 and 2 on Three and four off, five on, six and seven off. That should be programmed for my tire size and my gear ratio and my differential. Well guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, I know that this has been done before, but it hasn't been done by me. So anyway, I just wanted to show my experiences on here. The, the thing that scared me the most was when I had the... Uh, instrument cluster plug turned around and, and plugged in. I didn't know it would fit. I didn't know it was ambidextrous. It fit either way. So I figured that out pretty quick after it scared me. I thought I'm going to have to keep working on this thing. It worked out great. The RPM gauge works perfectly. The uh, speedometer works perfectly. And my son's going to be happy. So we're going to get to working on this truck before too long. Uh, I've got some things I've got to do to his uh, new body style truck. And then I'm going to put this one in the shop. And we're going to do a full exterior restoration on it. And I don't know how far he'll go with the interior. But it needs to be uplifted too. So anyway, I hope you all like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Y'all come back next time. We'll see what we got going then. Yeah. Yeah.